Sometimes we only want to determine parameters of individual peaks, for example their precise position, intensity or width, or maybe we want to deconvolute overlapping peaks. In that case we don't have to do a full refinement, we can also just fit a generic peak function such as a Gaussian, Lorentzian or Pseudo-Vogt function to the data. In this video I'm going to show how we can do this with Profex generic curve fitting module. The module is located under window, it's called peak fitting and it is one of the docking windows, so one of the windows we can detach from the main window and rearrange, either keep it free floating on a second screen or dock to another position around the main window. I will keep it on the right side of the graph. This is where it opens by default. And at the top of the window we get a list of scans. It shows all scans in our current project. Since we only have one here, only our measured data, we only can select one from here. And on the second line we can select the angular range we want to fit our curves in. So let's assume we want to fit this peak here, the K alpha 1, K alpha 2 duplet here at 46.6 degrees. So we activate the range selection mode by clicking this button, select range, and the margin of the graph will turn blue, which means that now we can use double click to set the start of the range. Somewhere, let's choose 46 degrees, somewhere here, double click, and then drag across the peak until around here, and we double click again to set the end of the range. Peak selection mode is automatically deactivated, and now we have uh, the starting angle in the left of box here and the end angle on the right box here. And we can still adjust it and fine tune it here, for example, like this. On the second line, we can choose the step size. It's usually deactivated by default. So I will uncheck it and we will come back to this later. On the third line, we can add a peak. And now we have to initialize a few functions. This peak here is composed of two peak functions, one for k alpha 1 and one for k alpha 2. And we also need a background function because the background signal is not at zero. So we usually start with a background function and in this short range from 46 to 47.45 degrees, we can use a linear background function. That's good enough. So we select the linear function, we activate the add peak mode the graph turns blue again and it says double click to set the first point of the linear function. So somewhere around here we want to have the start of the linear function. I double click here and then I can see a preview by, um, when I move the mouse. So I try to initialize the background function as good as possible. So somewhere around here I will set the end point by double clicking. Now this first function the linear one is initialized and it's showing up in the graph as a new scan and it also added automatically the sum curve of the fit. We will see in a second what this means. So after adding the background curve I want to add a peak function at the position of k alpha 1. So I can select one of these peak functions here, a Gaussian, Lorentzian, Pseudo-Vogt or Pearson 7. So let's use a Gaussian, which is the simplest function we have. Let's choose this. When we initialize this function, we have to set the tip somewhere around here first. Double click, and then when we drag, we can see the preview again. So we try to initialize the, this shape as good as possible. Double click, and now the function is initialized. And we stay in at peak mode, so we can immediately set the next one, double click on the tip here, drag to see the preview, and double click to set the second point. Now we have a list of three functions, a linear one and two Gaussian peak functions initialized, but not yet fit to our data. In the functions list, we can see all the, the function coefficients. For linear, we have a constant coefficient and the slope, the, the linear coefficient, currently in, initialized with these values. And for the two Gaussian functions, we have the center, the half width at half maximum, and the intensity, and it also calculates the area. On the second page, 
we see all variables used by these functions in one list and we can change the the initial value for example if i prefer to have no slope now i double click on the variable that is used for the linear coefficient of the background and then i can change the value manually now i also have to change the the constant um, value to maybe 100 so now it's just a flat line at 100 intensity. If I want to fix one or several variables, instead of fitting them, I can just uncheck them here. So all the checked variables will be fitted to the measured data. If I prefer to have a background with, without a slope, I can just uncheck it here and now it will stay at zero. But for now we just fit all of them. On the third page, we can control the, the convergence we can choose automatic convergence uh, parameters. Usually I just leave them at the default. Here we can reset all the values to the default, except for the maximum number of iterations. If it's set to zero, it's unlimited. So if something is unstable, it would iterate forever. So I don't like this, so I usually use some number, a few hundreds, maybe 100 up to 500 and it will tell us if it's converged or, or not yet and we just repeat it manually if it hasn't converged. So let's just set this to 100 and don't touch the other values for now. So now we can run the fit down here. We, we run curve fitting and it's very quick and down here on the left in the refinement protocol it says that it has converged with an R-square value of, of uh, 98.46%. But uh, it doesn't look very good. Um, there's a lot of uh, mismatch here on both sides. That's just because the Gaussian function is not a good approximation of these peak shapes here. So we can remove the two Gaussians, just select them here, remove the selected function, this one too, and we can try again, but this time we will use pseudo forked functions, which is a linear combination of Gaussian and Lorentzian, and is a much better description of the shape of typical XRD peaks. So we set it to pseudo forked, go to the add peak mode, double click to set the tip of the peak, double click here, initialize, double click. Same for the K alpha 2. Now, both are initialized, we, we kept the background function and we fit them again. And again it says converged here with a much much better R-square value. Sometimes it says uh, maximum steps reached instead of converged. Then this 100 cycles we selected as the maximum number of iterations here was not enough. So in that case we just click again and again and again until it says converged or we set this to a higher number, maybe 500, run again, until we see that it converges. In the functions list now the, we see the final values. So the slope of the background function is a little bit negative, so it's going a little bit down from left to right. And we can see the precise center positions of k-alpha1, k-alpha2, the width parameters, the peak height, so the intensity, or the area, integrated area of this peak. And we could export these results from the results menu up here. Export curve fits. And as always, we can choose if we have several projects with curve fit results, we could choose uh, which ones we want to export. Okay, and now we give a file name it's always as always it's a csv a uh, comma separated values file and this file it's by default it's saved in the current project directory and we can open it in a spreadsheet program using the semicolon as a field separator and it gives us the equations that were used with the parameters the description and then the values and also an XY table with the fitted curves. We already saw that we can fix certain variables. 
but we can also couple um, certain peak parameters. For example, if we we want to use the same width parameter for the two uh, peak functions, um, k alpha one and k alpha two. Now they are separate. One is re uh, fitted as variable for dash two, and the other one as five dash two. Uh, but sometimes it makes sense to use the same instead of two individual variables. It makes sense to use the same for both uh, curves. And in that case, we just double click on one of them and we can assign it to another variable. And we want to choose number four dash two, like this. And now both use the same variable and with the same value. And also we, we do the same for the shape. Doesn't make sense to use individual shapes. So now both are using variable number four dash two for the uh, width parameter and 4-4 for the shape parameter. But now we have to fit it again. We run it again and now they both have the same values here and here. Now let's do another example. I opened a different set of files. These are three similar files from the batch refinement tutorial and um, let's fit these two peaks here between 60 and 70 degrees. That's all the peaks I want to add. So I act deactivate the add peak mode and I start the fit. It converged with a 99.39% uh, convergence. We can see that the uh, the fitted curves use the same step size as the measured data. So they are a little bit uh, spiky here at the tips of the peaks. This is the default behavior, but I can also use a custom step size. So if I check here, I can add a different value. This will be about 10 times smaller than the measured step size. So I can use this one instead. I just have to repeat the fit. And now all the calculated curves and also the sum of the calculated curves now has a much smoother step size, which is only one tenth of the measured one. If I want to use the same set of curves for other files, um, these are very similar compositions. And let's say I want to use the same, to fit the same peaks with the same set of curves I did in the first example, I can just copy these curves to all open projects. So I use this button here. It will ask again which to which project I want to apply these curves. I select both of them. And now if I go here, I see the same set of curves. It's not yet fitted to this data set yet. So it's it's still it's using the, the fit results from the first data set. So I just have to run it to fit it to this data set and the same here. So I can very easily fit uh, the same set of curves to a certain number of projects, just like batch refinement. When we do a read refinement, it's very similar. Also, if I want to keep this configuration for later, I can save a preset, also very similar to read file refinements. So once I have set up these different functions, I can just go to project, save as refinement preset, give it a name. Next time I, I open similar files, of of a same of a similar composition again three different ones i can go to the presets menu and now i will find the preset curve fit 60 to 70 degrees can apply it to all and now all of these files have this preset applied but again i have to start the fit manually it's just the initialized curves 
but to actually get the results I have to run the fit manually. So sometimes using these generic curve fits is a lot easier if, if you just want to characterize certain individual peaks or deconvolute overlapping peaks. So it's quite handy to have this possibility in Profex. So I hope you like this video. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified about future videos and give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.